This is our 200th episode of Growing Deer TV, and to celebrate, Adam and I headed over to the Kentucky Proving Grounds as they have an early bow season. And while we were there, we had an encounter with a great buck we call King Crab at seven yards. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, also by Ricotics, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solution, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Record Rack, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Set Master, Blood Sport Arrows, and Prime Bows by G5. Growing Deer TV episodes have been watched literally millions of times, and we consider it a blessing to be part of your deer hunting family. For our newer viewers, you may not know that we make a new episode every week, 52 weeks out of the year. During hunting season, we share our hunts and tactics and techniques and whether they're hitting food plots or acorns. During the non-hunting season, we're always working with our trail cameras, showing you how we're planting food plots and what's going on in the deer world. <laughs> You can sign up right on our website to get a notice each week when we release a new episode. And we never sell or give away our email addresses. We want to protect you just like you're part of our family. The owner of the Kentucky Proving Grounds and my friend Terry Hamby purchased a piece of cutover timber company land about three years ago and his objective was to use modern science and wildlife management techniques to develop that property into a white-tailed deer and a wild turkey paradise. <laughs> Mr. Hamby's goal is to have wild free-ranging deer that are allowed to express their full potential, possibly even producing a Boone and Crockett one of these days. Part of meeting Mr. Hamby's objectives were harvesting enough does to balance the deer herd with the amount of food, but wasting no time on the deer management, Mr. Hamby took a doe right off the bat. Here's doe number one. I'm more than happy to do my part in this aspect of the deer management program at the Kentucky Proving Grounds. I love fresh venison and I love honey. Mr. Hamby's farm is in an area in Kentucky where hunters can purchase multiple deer tags, so we settled back down to see if we'd get another opportunity. Adam had set this pair of muddy stands earlier in the year and we knew it was really tight between the bedding area and the food plot. So we were cautious how we moved, letting these velvet antlers work their way through the bedding area toward the stand. Setups like this are great locations to catch bucks during the early season. They often leave the bedding area right before dark and move directly to the feeding area.
We knew from Narconix cameras there was a good buck using the area. We were not surprised when a few moments later, we noticed a set of antlers that appeared even larger further out in the bedding area. As the buck slowly closed the gap, I was straining to get a look at their body because you need to estimate the age of a buck by the body and not their antlers. At about 30 yards, the buck finally stepped into some shorter brush, giving us a clear view of his chest and back. It was really interesting that both the yearlings and the three-year-old buck took the path of most resistance through the cover to the food plot rather than walk down the open trail right in front of our stand. I'm sure some folks are really wondering why I didn't take the easy shot at that buck at about seven yards when he's looking the other way. The goal of my friend and this landowner is to allow bucks to express most of their antler potential, and I know that a three-year-old buck has got a lot of room to grow. I expect to receive a few emails or Facebook comments, yeah, but what if a neighbor shoots that buck, or he gets ran over on the road, or you don't hunt on public land? Yeah, that's possible, but I know if I'd have shot it, he certainly won't grow, because there's one rule in all deer management that works no matter where deer are. Dead deer don't grow. And yes, if I was hunting on public land, I'd have probably took the shot. I really think hunting should be fun and not just about the antlers. As the sun set, I sat there and stand very thankful for the venison I'd been provided and the opportunity to watch those bucks as they fed out in the Eagle Seed 4-H food plot. We got down just a little early because the wind was getting really swirly. We know there's a good four-year-old we call Inferno. Flame like times in here. So we want to get down before we bugger him up. Retrieve our dough, take it back to camp. The cool front passed over the Kentucky Proving Grounds the next day. Along with that cool front, the wind changed directions, so Adam and I switched to a stand at a smaller food plot. We had had a hot zone, non-typical fence protecting a portion of this food plot all summer, and it was obvious the beans inside where the fence was was over waist tall on me, while outside the fence, none of them were more than ankle high. The lead doe eventually circled our stand without busting Adam or I and all our camera gear, and it gave us great confidence with our scent control techniques. Soon after she and a smaller fawn faded out of sight, another doe approached the area. This opportunity unfolded quick, 
and after the shot, I knew I had more venison for the freezer. Judging by the amount of browse pressure on those 4-H soybeans, Adam and I were very confident we'd have a good chance of seeing some more deer before sundown. Sure enough, another long-nosed doe made her way toward the field. This one came from the opposite direction of the one I just shot, once again boosting our confidence in our scent control techniques. As Adam and I got down and recovered both of those does after a very short blood trail, we knew we were off to a great start for the 2013 season. You can keep up with the entire Growing Deer team daily on Facebook and or Twitter and see if we're hunting acorns or food plots or watch stage of the rut. We're encountering wherever we're hunting. I hope you're blessed with a safe and enjoyable 2013 season. Wherever you are, I hope you take a little time to enjoy creation and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Join us for the next 200 episodes of Growing Deer TV.